Thank you, Jack. Firstly, I must apologize that I need to leave immediately after I speak because I've got a 6.30 flight and I thought I could stay until the end of the session, but the transport people just say that I need to leave the hotel by 4 p.m. I like to very briefly say that in my opinion, there are six key security challenges facing Asia as a whole. Number one, we've heard the North Korea crisis. I think, as we all know, this is a crisis that is unknown, unpredictable, but my point is that we can't afford to have war or conflict as the cost of that is too high and could perhaps even lead to a World War III. We need to deal with two stubborn and unpredictable leaders and, and to be prepared for uncertainties. Few people would ever have thought that several months ago the brother Kim Jong-un was assassinated in my airport in Kuala Lumpur, and, and that was something that was totally unpredictable. I, I like to perhaps say that there are three ways that we should deal with North Korea. Firstly, I think direct negotiations is important. It has to be an opening of direct links. The US Special Representative North Korea, Ambassador Jo Yoon, happens to be a very close friend of mine because he was the US ambassador in Malaysia before taking up his new role. And he was telling me that he's not allowed to even visit North Korea. And how can we have a person who is supposed to be handling negotiations with North Korea not being able to visit North Korea? So I think we need to persuade the State Department to, to perhaps look at a more direct negotiation approach to North Korea. Secondly, I think there has to be stronger UN sanctions in North Korea and enforcement of those sanctions. Uh, in Malaysia, for example, we have frozen the bank account of the North Korean embassy. The North Korean embassy has been very active uh, promoting importing things and trade between uh, North Korea and using the embassy in Malaysia to do other uh, commercial activities. I think we need to close that down. And, and thirdly, I think we need to ensure, and that's somewhat controversial, ensure that there's no regime change in North Korea. We all don't like Kim Jong-un. But I think to pursue regime change, I think it's very dangerous, very unpredictable, and could lead to unwanted consequences. So that's North Korea. My second key security challenge that Asia needs to address, of course, is also something that was alluded to earlier, South China Sea. We need to find a way forward in the South China Sea approach, possibly bringing to a fruition the conclusion of a code of conduct between China and ASEAN. It may need a two-part solution. China prefers bilateral negotiations between China and specific countries, uh, which I think would possibly continue and go on. But I think China needs to also accept that it has to uphold multilateral and international norms like the law of the sea and the freedom of navigation. And I think in this regard, many of us in ASEAN are hoping that at the China ASEAN summit in Manila next week, the COC could be signed. The third security challenge is in Myanmar, the Rohingya crisis. That, I think, is the biggest humanitarian crime facing Asia today. We are deeply disappointed with Aung San Suu Kyi. I mean, many have held her up as a democracy icon, but now the ethnic and inhumane uh, cleansing in Rakhine state are worrying in the sense that it could spur a growth of terrorism. I think the world must speak out on this serious humanitarian crisis. Fourth challenge I think we need to deal with in Asia is the Pakistan-India-China border. Minor skirmishes there, but it can lead to accidental flare-up. I would leave the governor to speak on this later, as that is his specific area of expertise. The fifth challenge I think we need to deal with is Islamic State terrorism and the potential of lone wolves attack in Southeast Asia. I think that is something that we are very worried about. Uh, that is not the biggest threat to Southeast Asia right now. The, the conflict in the city of Marawi in southern Philippines is an almost open urban war with volunteers coming from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore fighting alongside Filipino Islamic terrorists. The radicalization of young Muslim youth 
fighting as volunteers in Syria and now coming back to our countries is indeed very worrying because these people could become lone wolves in, in carrying out terrorist activities. My sixth point, I think, which is important to also take into consideration are non-traditional security threats. And these could be things like transboundary crimes, drug and human trafficking, economic and cyber crimes, piracy, human rights abuses, and the uh, smuggling of children and women. The key questions that we face then are the existing confidence building mechanisms sufficient? What more can be done to further enhance regional peace and stability? For Southeast Asia right now, for many years, we've got the ASEAN Regional Forum and more recently the ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting. I think these will continue to be important mechanisms. The question now is should Asia adopt the European OSCE as a model that perhaps can be a bigger region-wide uh, security uh, mechanism. We need to also have more intelligence sharing among countries in Asia because that is so important in the fight against terrorism. There need to be also new mechanisms and protocols to combat cyber security and cyber terrorism. One key point that we have been advocating for a long time is that we need to have governments throughout the region pushing forward for more inclusive development. To reduce inequalities is important because often inequalities are the cause of terrorism and we need to reduce these causes of terrorism. And to be able to engage the younger generation, I think is very important. Many of them are attracted by the Islamic uh, fundamentalists and extremism. We need to be able to get out and have good exchanges with them. I think at the end of the day, we need to have perhaps more track two or track 1.2, um, 1.5 uh, dialogues, candid, open, semi-official dialogues that track two or track 1.5 can achieve better than the official government dialogues. At the end of the day, I'd like to quote Winston Churchill, it's better to jaw jaw than to war war. Thank you. Okay.